You're gonna give me a big shatter right there. Well, I'm gonna be leaning, I'm not gonna be sitting back. I'm just leaned up right now. Are we already on? Are we on? Or are we just recording? We're not live, right? Yeah, we're yeah. live. Here we go. Oh. All right. I thought we were just recording. Hello, hot herb. Hello, Al Bear. This is a new setup. This is a new setup, so we're going to be kind of fighting through this together. Yeah, because Alan keeps blocking my light. <laughs> Please, no pictures. Hey, guys, tell me if it looks like Kelly doesn't have the light. So look at the light on your side. When you sit and block my light, your light. Does that look like I forgot to give Kelly the light? Hello, Mel. too much because I don't want to violate her privacy, but hopefully everybody's doing good. Michael, yeah, it may sound different um, on the phone. We're going to try it. I don't know. We're going to try it this time. We've got this going. We're going to have this going, and then we've got our YouTube camera going. So we got Alan's a lot trying going. some new things. Trying some new stuff. He's been working very hard on the lighting situation. Now, when we do the podcast, are we looking here or here? Well, you're not supposed to look at either one, but that's the YouTube. So we're looking here more. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we do refer to it, we look there. I'm just asking. <laughs> you have to ask these things. Whenever they interview me for TV stuff, I said, you want me to look at you or look at the reporter? You have to ask. Yeah. So I'm looking at the camera. Sure. Not at y'all. Don't be offended. You can barely hear us, huh? Hmm. I don't know what you can do about that. I don't know that that's going to make a difference. I don't know. It might. There's no way to turn up the volume. Lots of static, too, huh? Not as loud. Hmm. The sound gets good, then it goes back down, and then up. It's a little muffled. <laughs> I don't know, guys. This is why you should listen or subscribe to our YouTube channel. So is this going to be for YouTube or this for YouTube? This for YouTube. Okay, so what if you try the live thing? Is this on, what is this on? Is this on YouTube? Yeah, it's live. I was like, what if you do live this on Instagram? Would that be different? Audio-wise, I mean. Yeah. It's okay. We'll it's figure fine. it out. We'll, we'll try it this one time. We'll try it this one time. Just bear with us as we work through this new setup. This could be this could be a disaster. No, Just saying. It's not gonna be a disaster. It's totally not going to be a disaster. Okay. You ready? Well I don't have a camera man, so I'm hoping that thing is working. Is it already, the clap is already taking care of the audio thing you wanted? Oops. Sorry. Let me to make sure that thing is recording. I don't trust myself. I was working on this all day and yesterday. And yeah, it's the day counting. Before. Yep, it's counting. Okay, good. Sure is. We're already six minutes in. No, we're not. Why is it every time we get ready to start the podcast, I start yawning? And I don't know why. Every time. And then I'm going to get a burst of energy about 11 o'clock tonight. All right, here we go. Oh, we didn't close the doors. The dogs are out. Are out. Keep it cooler out here, but they're open. Okay. Okay, so. Bu -bu -bu -bu. So, um. We're gonna go. Testing, one, two, testing, testing. How about that? Just remember, I'm gonna hit record, but just give it a second. Okay. Why don't you touch or point me when you're ready to go? <laughs> like a good director. A lot of moving parts here. A lot of pressure on the great Alonzo. Oh. Me, <clears throat> I'm just easy breezy. I'm just the talent. There's there's a beauty in just being the talent. Testes one two. Testes one two. That might have been the first sound check I ever did.
Okay. Welcome to A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. It's a podcast starring Alan Evans, my husband and podcast co-host. A trade in the house. And me, I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans, mixing things up with the intro. I threw you off. Yeah, you threw me off. You See, threw me you off. gotta be ready. You gotta keep you on your toes. I'm very discombobulated. I know, you got a lot of new things happening. Yeah. It's You're very stressed, you're a little sweaty. <laughs> But am, it's I okay. am I sweaty? Sweaty, but not funky. I'm sweaty. It's more important to keep the funk in check. But yeah, Alan's been trying to do a lot of new things in the office. Rearrange things, actually. It looks really nice. It's amazing what just shifting a little furniture around can do for the feel of a room. Why don't you paint a visual picture? What, well, are, we, what are we talking we've about? All, we've been broadcasting um, from your office. For the, the orifice. For six years now. Oh, yeah, I think so. And yeah, yeah. it's always been uh, pretty much the same. Just, just be same honest. Same setup. Just be honest. What? It's horrible. It wasn't horrible. It, it was horrible. just the same setup. So Alan decided, you know, let's put a little bit of effort because we do have a loyal, faithful crew who likes to tune in to our YouTube channel to watch us record the podcast live. It's the, the 40 faithful, give or take. <laughs> But people do often go back and watch the podcast later on YouTube in addition to listening to it stream wherever you get your favorite podcasts. But Alan's like, we need to maybe make it look a little nicer. So he ordered all these lights. I feel like I am in a TV studio right now. But because of the layout of the room, he's had to shift some furniture around. He's gotten mood lighting. He's lit candles up in here. It's, it's like... It's very professional, Alan. Kind of reminds you of the first time you uh, rolled in my apartment, the compartment. You rolled well, up I there. I thought you were gay. Why is this? Why does this remind you of being gay? Well, it doesn't remind me of being well, gay. Well, that's what happened because, the first time I went in your apartment. Because I'm not gay. Number one, not that there's anything wrong with being no. gay. But I mean, but I'm, how I'm is just, this like that? Though? I'm just saying, when you went into my apartment, you said the same thing. You're like, "Wow, it looks really nice in here." And then, are you gay? And I'm like, "Well, no, I'm not. Well, I just I have an eye for things, right? <laughs> it's an eye for things. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes a girl needs to ask those questions early on in a relationship. It can save a lot of drama later." But anyway, Alan, not gay, but right. uh, his office looks really good now. And this is our new studio set, it, set up, subject to change. Yeah, yeah. Everything I learned about setting this up, I was telling Kelly, I learned on the YouTube. And I started from square one. I didn't know, like, okay, if you're going to film a YouTube video in an office, a small office, like a, this office is, what is this, 14 by 10 or Don't something? Don't ask like? me measurements. 12 by 10. It's, <laughs> it's not a big room. But, but they, do you trust a man with measurements? They, they all said to use a corner as a backdrop because it gives your room depth. Yeah, it really has made a difference. So that was tip number one. Tip number two was get your lights in check. So I had to buy some lights on the Amazon. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing mm -hmm. this on a shoestring budget. When did I tell you to light aromatherapy candles? Well, the candles are just for fun. Just those a are, nice touch. Yeah. They yeah, smell nice in those here. Those are just to make it, it, to make it homey. But not gay. Does it feel homey? Very homey. <laughs> anyway, no, he did a great job. I'm Thank very, you. very proud of him Thank for you. making the effort. Because if you're going to do something, make it pretty. Right. Why not? Yes. Right? Put exactly. a little effort into it. Speaking of making it pretty, Alan and I are going to be making it pretty tomorrow. Because for the first time in about, well, let's see, how long have we done this podcast? We're coming Since up on seven 2017. years. 2017. Coming up on seven years for the first time in seven years, we're going to take a few pictures, um, like their their promo photos, not just for a sandwich with some lovin'. I'm also going to be taking pictures with my love letters to Kelly. Love letters, love letters to Kelly. Podcast co-host Robert Ehrman. Stop talking. And for the first time in about ten years. I'm doing pictures with the Kid Craddock Morning Show. National Syndicate. So these are pictures that we're probably going to be using for the next decade. So we're uh, getting all gussied up. There's a studio. We've got a hard out. We've got to get in, get it done, get out um, from the studio in, in the heart of Dallas, Texas. 
and we've got a makeup artist coming. We've got a stylist who's going to be styling the photo shoot. And let me just tell you guys, that stylist pierced my soul. Why? So her, she is a she came wonderful over, stylist. Her name is here. Alex Cohen. What happened? Hashtag not an ad. She's not paying me. I'm just telling you, but she's great. You can follow her on Instagram. She's really, she's really great. She styled people for award shows. She's now the head something for this uh, fashion institute in Dallas. I, it's called Fig or something. Anyway, she's really good. Fig? It's, it stands for something. Oh, Fashion Institute. Gallery or something? Or group? Maybe it's group. Okay. <laughs> something like that. Anyway, she's a big deal. So um, she came over to my house, to our house, and Alan was out, and, I, and Alan said, just, you know, because guys don't care. He's like, just tell him to point at a few things, and I'll wear them. So I, I told her my sizes and everything, and I was very honest. This is a time, ladies, when you cannot lie, because you got to be wearing clothes that look good on camera. I can't be telling her what I wish I was. I had to tell her, okay, these are my sizes. And she comes over to see what I have to work with, but then she brings a rack of things that she could suggest, right? Oh, she brought stuff. A whole rack. Did she bring guy stuff? Thank the Lord. No, because she, she said she was probably just going to go through your closet oh. because <laughs> it's more about me. Right. Right. T-shirts. Because guys just need a ja He's got like a blazer and he's got jeans and stuff like well, that. Well, she, she literally picked out a pair of jeans and a white T-shirt. Right, because she want, cause she want, it's, she's keeping a neutral palette, something that's not too trendy because, you know, in two or three years, the whole style... Thing could change, so it's pretty, you know, neutral classics. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so she comes. She says, "Well, first things first. Let's go look through your closet." I have never been more embarrassed Why? about my clothing before. I think my clothes are fine, but not for a photo shoot. I'm not being self-deprecating. This is just the truth. My comfort color is black, and so when you go into my closet, it is a sea of blackness. And not a lot. A sea of what? Blackness. It's just dark. It's black and just black. And so there's a few little pots of color here, you know, because I have to do things for the American Heart Association and their signature, you know, wear red, the red campaign, the red for women. So I have a couple of pops of red. I have some blue, but it's just like drab, drab, drab. And she's literally just something. She doesn't even bother. You know when you're looking at a rack at Nordstrom Rack and you can kind of tell from the sleeves something hanging out, you're like, I'm not even bothering looking at this. She went through my entire closet and pulled out exactly two, well, actually, one thing. Because she pulled out this silvery, gray, metallic pleated skirt. And she didn't pull out, uh, she, I guess she didn't see it stuck back in there, this denim shirt I have, because she actually bought, brought a denim shirt for me to look at. And I said, oh, I already have one. So I went and got it for her to look at. And that was it. That's the only things she could use in my closet. Not necessarily, she was trying to make me feel, but I was like, man, I really, my wardrobe sucks. Because, you know, if you're like me, you know, I'm, I'm COVID, menopause, up and down on the weight. Sometimes you just go to the mall or the Nordstrom Rack or whatever. You just buy whatever fits. You don't even care. You just need something, and you're desperate, and you just buy anything. So I've got a, a closet full of that stuff that doesn't bring me joy. It gives me anxiety because when I pull those things out, it reminds me of the panic that I had when I bought it, that I was just getting it to have something that zipped or covered up, and I don't feel good in it. So, Alan, you might have to work with me a little bit. I'm going to have to go invest in some more pieces for my closet based on my experience. Why? We're, we're not going to do another photo shoot for 10 years. It's not so. about just a photo shoot, but I, you know, the, the world is your runway but if and you, how you present yourself to the world. But if you have And you need a, to feel good about yourself and the clothes you wear. And if I'm pulling out a dress with a big elastic smocked waistband only because I was desperate for something to wear when I was hosting a baby shower for Laura and I needed something blue. And so I have this dress that kind of makes me sad because I just, you know, had to have something because it fit. Why do I want to wear that again? Honey. But if you have a sea of blackness in your closet, I have a feeling all you're going to do is go out and buy some more black stuff. No, I can, I can buy... No, 
No, I, I could try, but she also told me, you know, you like can if you're try. Doing, what, what does that mean? If you're doing a photo shoot, there's certain things you should avoid, like she, like, like yeah. I didn't think about you it. You wear red and I wear green. Well, that, or you know, unless we're doing a Christmas family. Well, photo. you wouldn't throw you in a whole red ensemble anyway. Well, I, I look good in certain shades of red, like I did. At, I thought know, when you have red hair, you're not supposed to wear all red. You can wear certain shades of red. Oh. But anyway, like. For instance, I don't think I look good in white or tan because I think it washes me out. And she was saying, no, you know, with the right hair and makeup and jewelry, you can actually pull it off. And she put me in an outfit. I'm like, you're right. It looked good. But, like, for a photo shoot, this is just for any ladies, if, if, if you're wearing, like, a white shirt, you shouldn't wear pockets on the breasts. It should be just a plain front. So, because the pockets draw attention and sometimes they sag and it's not really a good clean look for a photo shoot. Well, I've heard, so, I've, like that. I've heard at some photo shoots, you want to draw attention to the breasts. That's not the type of photo shoot this will be, but so, you know, like with a white shirt, I need something a little bit more tailored, a crisp collar, no pockets on the bosom. Um, they were also fitting me in, you know, right now, a wide leg trouser is very trendy. Yeah, yeah. Why'd you kind of laugh at that? Because <laughs> I've not seen you in a wide-legged trouser. Well, you did when I went to the American Heart Association lunch. Those black pants I wore that I got at the swap party that still have the tags on them from Ann Taylor. Oh, okay, yeah. That was one. So, okay. So anyway, it just made me think, you know, I need to maybe put just a little bit more effort into the way I look every day. You know, and what it's so silly, but like when we do our bucket list and stuff, not every year, but I always put, I need to learn to accessorize more. I need to try accessorizing more, just with jewelry and belts and accessories, because it does change the way. I don't know if it works the same for you, Alan, but I know for only speaking for myself as a female, when I dress better, I put some effort, I feel better. Yeah, it affects, for sure. It affects the way I face the day. If something, you know, bad happens, I don't take it nearly as bad as if I'm wearing you know, a schlumpy sweatsuit, no bra, and I'm caught out running to Costco with my hair and a messy ponytail and no makeup, apologizing to people when I run into them and they recognize me. Well, maybe I should put in more of an effort. Because I'm a big t-shirt, hat, jeans, vans guy. And I but used that's, to, that's a good look for you. And I, used to wear, and I used to wear fancy jeans, but now I just, I don't care. I just wear the Levi's. Well, the, the difference for guys, though, is you can wear a baseball hat and you still seem somewhat polished. I have to do the hair and the makeup and all of it. And anyway, it doesn't matter. My point is, is I'm just going to try to put more effort into the way I dress. Okay, so for me, she picked out a pair of jeans, a white t-shirt, a like a dark gray, grayish black. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Shacket. Shacket. And then I have a I have a fly camel blazer. It's beautiful, and she said, yeah, "Have me and bring fly. that." Fly. I got that from the Banana Republic. Gosh, I don't know, early 2000s, but it's still, that thing is nice. Well, she she basically said that jeans and t-shirt and, and shacket look was like your your blueprint. You My know? blueprint? Yeah, for, like that's the ensemble like she's going for for you. She said you can pull a couple of your other t-shirts as long as they're kind of neutral and, um, and bring that leather jacket. I, I'm still not clear on the footwear. I, I've got, she showed me which ones. They're up top, I can show you which ones to bring. What she wanted, like, your your uh, black, um, like, lace-up boots, kind of. Black? Boots, the black ones. And then, that's not with your leather jacket. That's with the jacket. Oh. Right? And then I thought you could bring your brown, um, she called them a word, but I can't remember the name of the style. But I Riding boots? Are. No, no. It's the name of a boot, but I can't remember what it's called. Chuckas? No, it's like a boot. It's like the... Londoner or something. Cowboy? No, it's called something. I just can't remember the name of it. It's a style of boot. You have it. I just can't remember the name of it. Well, what is it? Anyway, I can't remember the name, but I can point at it. Engineer? No, it's a leather booty kind of thing. Do we need to just keep going through all the boot styles? You'll never, ever say it. It's so a it booty matter. style? It's like a booty. It's like an ankle boot. Like a little brown. Well, now I'm, now I'm curious what it is. It's a famous style of boot, like... British people. <laughs> Good eye, Mike. Did she like my stuff? Yeah, she said, you know, you, all you have is a sea of t-shirts. And <laughs> what you think of, she what, didn't want you to bring... What'd like, you think of the Ed Hardy collection? You don't have a lot of Ed Hardy. Oh, they were hidden. 
They're all in the past. Oh, I, I was thinking Robert. Um, Robert Graham. Robert Graham. No, no, no. They um, she collection. didn't really look at that. She just <laughs> kind of saw the sea of T-shirts from the side, and she could tell. But she didn't want you to bring something with a lot of print and pattern. Yeah, right. You don't wear. Anyway, typically, there's that. So we're doing a photo shoot tomorrow. Typically, don't wear logos when you're on TV. And so that's what I've got to deal with. I've got to wash my hair, tan my legs, mm -hmm. and um, y'all, my eyelids are so puffy. I already texted the makeup artist Janine. She's the you remember Janine from the wedding? She did my mm -hmm. wedding makeup. Um, I told her she's gonna have to work some of her makeup magic on my eyelids. They're so puffy. Why is it always for me before a wedding, a big birthday, a photo shoot, some kind of video you're going to do, I always sprout up a freaking Mount Vesuvius on the side of my head. Where? Right here. Yeah. See it? Well, you'll just have to Think turn. Janine could powder that down? Well, just make sure you're photographed from the left. She's going to need to, so you're admitting it doesn't look good. Well, that's a big bump up She's there. She's going to need to bring a cold compress to push that thing down. I don't know why it, God. Quit touching it. Like too, that that's why it won't go away. Because I keep touching it. It's real. Did know. you put anything on it? Like yeah, that I put that oxy stuff? stuff on yeah. it. The last three nights, I nuked it, and it's still there. And you keep touching it, and you've got your greasy hat band sitting on it. So there's that. And I'll try to make it explode tonight. Oh, well, at least something will be exploding. Tonight. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to transition to that. But I will have to tell you about an uncomfortable incident I had while out walking the dogs. Very awkward exchange mm -hmm. with a woman passing by me in her vehicle. Did you know this woman? I think I'm supposed to know her. I think it's one of our neighbors I'm supposed to know. Okay. But you know how it is when you, when you see a neighbor in their driveway or in their front yard, you recognize them in that moment because they are in their driveway or their yard. Oh, that's my neighbor that lives in that house. I've never known their name before, but I know that's my neighbor. But when you run into that person, like at the grocery store or the library, you'll walk right past them because you don't recognize them because they're out of the normal routine, right? So I think she obviously has to be one of our neighbors because well, she was driving. We know I every don't. Neighbor. I think she's back there, <laughs> back over there. But she was driving in our neighborhood, which would lead to me believing she's one of our neighbors. Describe the vehicle. I don't remember, honey. You know, I don't pay attention to that. What the color of the vehicle? Couldn't tell you. Oh my goodness! Because it was so horrifying, I almost blacked out. Mm -hmm. I just can't even remember. But okay. first, I will have to say my. My sweet, my sweet, sweet best friend since fifth grade, Tommy Jean. Tommy Jean. She's coming to town for my birthday on April 13th. I'm very excited. And then the very next day, we're going to be celebrating my nephew Ezra, my great nephew Ezra's birthday on the 14th, even though his birthday is not actually on the 14th. His birthday is on the 12th, I believe. Anyway, he's going to be one. And I absolutely love spoiling my great nephew. He's my very first one, and I want to give him the best of everything. And that includes the cutest baby clothes. And I have found those online at Caden Lane, which I'm so proud to have as a sponsor of our podcast now. Caden Lane zipper hoodie onesies are so adorable. They've got the cutest patterns and prints, but they're also not only extremely soft, they're functional. They have this full-length zipper that makes getting your baby dressed or, you know, changed with diaper changes really quick and simple because the footie stays in place. You don't have to take the whole thing off to change baby. And they've got the cutest baseball onesie right now, Alan. I know we're very excited about the Texas Rangers. It's called the Home Run Design. Nice. We're going to get that for him. Nice. Anyway, Caden Lane has the best personalized baby clothes and baby items. Pretty much they can personalize anything you can think of, whether it's a T-shirt, a puzzle, blanket, swaddle. And, you know, Caden Lane was started in 2005 by a single mom who wanted to create better, cuter clothes and accessories and keepsakes for her kids. And now Caden Lane's mission is to make all moms' lives easier and great aunts, too. Um, that shows up in the way they design clothes, extra zips, extra snaps to make outfit changes quick and easy. If you're thinking about summer already, they've got a new swim collection already available. It keeps your baby's skin safe and your little ones with UPF 50-plus sun protection swim swimwear that blocks 98% of those harmful rays and cuts down on the lights you have with the kids over sunscreen. Oh, that's so frustrating. And best of all, they have premium quality matching swimsuits for the whole family. 
And of course, Cane Lane's famous for their matching pajama sets. They've got the cutest sets for Easter. And if you have older kids, check out their color neat pajama sets. They're basically coloring books your kids wear to bed. And they come with machine washable markers. Your kids will love those. Make great gifts. Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn, infant, and toddler apparel. Head to cadenlane.com slash sandwich20 and use code sandwich20 for 20% off your order. Once again, that's K. No. Cadenlane. Dot com backslash sandwich 20 c a d e n l a n e dot com backslash sandwich 20 for 20 percent off and make sure you use our promo code sandwich 20 so they know we sent you and that's caden lane with a c just a double to just make like sure. i spelled it c a d e n l a n e <laughs> dot com thank you caden lane um, very, very brief spring break review. And then um, I'll tell my embarrassing story. Oh, yeah, you teased that. Alan was so intrigued by my sorry, embarrassing, sorry. mortifying, I almost I thought passed you were... out in the street story that he just forgot. Yeah, no, 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 let's do yours first. You, I thought we were seguing to something else, but I forgot you didn't finish your story. Finish finish the story, and then we'll we'll do a brief, very brief spring break review. Because it was so eventful, it won't take long. <laughs> All right, so I'm out walking the dogs, and I listen to my favorite podcast, including A Sandwich and Some Lovin', while I'm walking the dogs. And so a lot of times, I'm, you know, I'm just walking the dogs, and I always smile at people who are passing by me, but every once in a while, people will be talking, and I'm like, take the earbud out. Excuse me, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? And I try to make it look obvious that I'm wearing earbuds, because I don't want people to think I am rude if they speak to me and I don't speak. So I like pull my ear back so you can see I'm wearing this bright red earbud. I can't hear what you're saying. So anyway, I'm walking the dogs and this woman is driving towards me. You know, I'm walking on the left side of the street so she's walking towards me and she stops and rolls down her passenger side window and is talking to Whoa. me like that. You think know? it's going to be a drive-by? Forward. No, she doesn't oh. like she's going to kill me. She's just leaning out and she's like, hey! She said, you waiting on my son. I mean, no, my son waited on you. My, my son waited on you. Her son apparently is a server, right? Okay. And she said, my son waited on you. I said, oh, really? I said, oh, that's so funny. She goes, yeah, he said you, you couldn't stop winking at him the whole time. And I said, really? She goes, yeah, she said you winked at him the whole time. And I was talking to... Um, my co-host on the Kid Craddock Morning Show, and they That's said, and they said, yeah, you wink all the time. Do you notice me winking all the time? I don't. Apparently, I wink all the time. And everyone but me. I Everybody guess. but you, I right, guess. Right, yes. Right. And then Trey, our producer, said, yeah, he said one of the best memories he has is of me comforting him by winking at him. He had got he got on the air when he had first started on the Kid Craddock Morning Show, and it's live. But thank the Lord, we have a little delay for reasons such as this. He he dropped like the f bomb, <laughs> and totally panicked. And Kid was still alive at the time, and so he thought Kid was going to kill him. Of course, there's a delay and everything. He panicked, and he said, "I looked over at him, and I mouthed, it's going to be okay,' and I winked at him." And he said he immediately felt at peace about that and so apparently i guess i wink at people when i feel like it's okay you're doing mm -hmm. fine so maybe the waiter all i could think of is maybe he was having a bad day and i kept winking at him but i'm like horrified that this mother thinks i'm trying to pick up her 20 something year old or maybe even younger kid who's waiting on me and right. if i was if they did think i was trying to pick him up now i'm offended because he didn't give me his phone number there's twofold here. All right, a couple of things. Well, three things. I have three things. Number one, this is becoming a pattern with you. What, winking at waiters? Looking, winking, being lecherous towards young boys. <laughs> not. Young men. Why is, well, no, it's not. Anna said I do it to her. I just do it all the time. Like, I'll say well, something. If I'm joking, we, I'll wink. Or if I'm, like, it's okay. We have, there's a track record and there's precedence. What? Uh Travis Gulledge? That whole, that whole bit? I wasn't winking at Travis Gulledge. 
I, you were being lecherous be looking at his pictures. No, I was trying to build him up to my daughter. Okay. I was selling him I'm to just my saying, daughter. I'm just saying there is a pattern. That's not a pattern. That's me building up my friend's cute son for my cute number, daughter. Number two, you say people say you wink at them because they, they feel like you're trying to comfort them. Yeah, like it's just like it's okay. Okay. My question would be, as your husband... You don't need comforting. Why have I never seen a wink? Ever. And like, ever. Alan, let me tell you this. I have told you before, and you better remember this. I've told you I love it when you wink at me. Well, see, I don't you wink at how, everybody. I, I save not, those for the perfect occasion. He, we would be, when we used to be, you know, courting each other in our early stages of love <laughs> and marriage. When we got married, y'all, we would go out every day together. I'd come home. We'd go, we we gained the, the newlywed 20 together. We were happy and Going out every day to eat lunch, we drink cocktails on the patio. We go out at night, and when Alan would just for no reason, he would look across me with his bourbon in front of him, and I'd be sitting across from him with my martini, and he would just wink at me. I would just melt. Give you I the, cannot tell you, give you the last the, time you winked at me. Give you the A E smolder, huh? It was very sexy. Cause a little. Uh, you haven't winked at me. I can't tell you. So don't you be fussing at me about not winking at you. What, what and did, I told you it turned me on. What did, what did you say when I winked at you? It did what? It made me melt into a puddle. A puddle, huh? And I had a number. Well, why would you not want no, me I, to feel that? Well, I would, but. But see, I'm not conscious of my winking, so I don't feel like you need comforting for me. Apparently, because I'm not winking at you like that. And I'm, I'm not winking flirtatiously with these people. Otherwise, I think that'd be kind of creepy, right? But you, uh, yeah. you, you winking at me is sweet and flirtatious, and I love it, but you don't do it. And now you can't do it for a long time because it's like, you never bring me flowers. And the next day you show up with flowers, it doesn't count. And I thought I had a number three, but I forgot. You don't. No, I forgot. Uh, my lecherous <laughs> winking? <laughs> it is very lecherous. But it's not. So what, what did she say? What was the outcome? That what was, was, the the outcome? was like, that was oh, it? ha, 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 ha. Because I've got the dogs there, you know, and so I just like, okay, thanks, bye. Oh, what am I supposed to say to that? That's not too bad. I'm winking at her son. But you still don't, but it was but you still don't know who it was. But it was momentous enough for him to come home and tell his mother about it, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if I, you know, if I was in a restaurant and I was waiting on somebody or I was in there and a, a famous regional radio star winked at me, I'd probably tell everybody I knew. Repeatedly. The entire meal, apparently. I don't know. That's it. That's my whole story. No, that was a good one, babe. That's a good one. This is definitely... It was? This is becoming a pattern. Oh, speaking pattern of... pattern of two. Speaking of patterns, you told me the other night... Okay, so this is a pattern. We've got Travis Gulledge and we've got the unidentified... Waiter, waiter that you've winked at and were lecherous with. So that's two. We'll keep track of those. I did not wink at Travis. Another that's thing why. Another thing we keep track of are your ailments. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we were in bed the other night. And it was last night. To be was it last specific. night? It was last night? So we, I was just about to fall asleep. And I am chatty Kathy oh. last night. So chatty. Oh, my goodness. And all this of a time sudden. time change just messed me up. All of a sudden, the covers go flying off of me, and I'm in the fetal, you know, I'm in the fetal position just trying to stay warm. The covers go flying off of me, and I see a, I look over my shoulder, and I see a knee go up in the air, and then I see Kelly grip the back of her knee, and she goes, oh. And then she starts rubbing her kneecap. She's like, oh. Oh. My knee hurts. I think there's a. There's a bubble under my kneecap. I mean, it feels like there's a water bubble behind my kneecap. That's what it felt like. Now, is there a water bubble behind a my kneecap? A bubble? I don't know. Under but that's your what it felt like. A bubble under your kneecap. I don't know, Alan. When you say you have bubble guts, do you literally have bubbles in there? Yes, no. Yes, I I'm do. just I telling do. you. Actually, I do. That it felt like there was an air bubble. A painful. That's what it felt like. A very painful I'm just, air bubble behind my kneecap. I'm just saying, add it to the list. And then I asked add Alan. It to the list. I said, Does your, is your kneecap attached to anything or is it like floating around? Because I'm not really sure. And I don't know. If you are an orthopedic surgeon or a doctor who specializes in joints or knees, 
Email us at podcast at kellyandallen.com and let us know, is your kneecap, is it like just floating? Or is it, it hurt? Is it attached? It hurt really bad. And, and what's behind it? And when I was driving, it's like having that position with your knee kind of slightly bent with your foot on the gas pedal. It was hurting. So I don't know. It just was hurting. Look, y'all, I'm getting older and I'm accepting it mm -hmm. to a point. Mm -hmm. But I'm really kind of upset about this upcoming birthday. It's the first time I've truly, I, I cried. Oh. oh my gosh, the very first birthday I cried was my 27th birthday because I was working on my birthday at Ruby Tuesday mm -hmm. in Smyrna, Georgia. Oh, and you had your mom khakis on? I was wearing khakis, my black tennis shoes mm -hmm. with the um, non-slip sole because, mm -hmm. you know, greasy floors in the kitchen, you have to not slip. Yeah. And we had, we had to wear khakis, but we also had um, to okay. wear a button-down. And it had to be a certain shade. It could either be a long sleeve button-down. It could be, either be white, yellow, you know, pale pastels, um, blue, pink, or light green. It had to be a pastel. Were there pockets on the ass? Um, it didn't matter. I mean, I don't remember that part. But we all had to wear this navy blue apron over it. Mm. And it had big pockets in the front because you had to keep your, you know, your uh, your pad for taking orders. I don't know what that's called. And then your money bag. So and definitely I, this wasn't the Hooters or tight no. ends or bombshells no. type uniform. But I love working for Ruby Tuesday. I really did. Mm -hmm. And um, I stood there in, in the mirror and I just was getting ready for it. And I just started crying because I was like, this is not where I thought I'd be. It was not my 27th birthday. It was my, yeah, it was my 27th birthday. Was my 20, yeah, it was my 27th birthday. Yeah, it was 27th. Okay. Okay. Doing the math. Let's say it was around 27. Around 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was 23. It was 23. It was my 23rd birthday. It was my 23rd birthday. I had to think. I'm sorry, honey. I had to think. It was my 23rd birthday. I think I said 27 because I'm about to be 57, so I got confused temporarily. Okay. As part of my ailments, I'm losing my memory. Right. It's my 23rd birthday. So it's your 23rd birthday. And not cried, not cried. super important to the, the story, but to be accurate. But that was the last time I cried when I turned right. an age. Right, right, right. It's because I wasn't where I wanted to be in my life at 23. Right. And so now, I'm. it's not that I'm not where I want to be in my life. I'm happy where I am in my life, you know, for the most part. Oh, just I winking at a, young men all the well, time. Well, yeah. Coming home and not winking at me. and Yeah, what he said. Anyway, but I'm about to be 57. And for the first time, I'm like, dang, that sounds old. That does, doesn't it? I'm 57. I don't think so. It sounds old to me. And then when I said that to somebody the other day, they were like, you were going to look back one day and wish you were 57. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Intelligently, I know that. But right now, this was kind of like a little gut punch. Yeah, well, you know, there's always somebody older until... And there's always somebody that's dead. Until they... Didn't make it to 57 and wish they made it to yeah, 57. Yeah, until they stopped you know? having birthdays, and that's not a good thing, so... So there's that. So this birthday is coming up. I'm, I'm really happy my best friend since fifth grade, Tommy Jean, is flying in on the actual day. We're going to do a... You know, I wasn't going to do a birthday this year. I was like, it's 57, who cares? But because Tommy Jean's coming in... And I've had so many people ask. I guess they just assume I'm going to do something, and we're going to do a little get-together now. But Well, the last couple of years, we've been kind of on and off on the birthdays. Yeah, so. because I figure, like, at this point in life, you only do birthdays that end in zero, right? I did do the double nickel birthday. But, I, you know, 50, then you do 60, then you do 70. Do you do se yeah, you do 75. I guess after that point, you do every five years. Those are the ones where you're just glad you're having a birthday. Or are you? Are you like ready to hang it up? Like, that depends, well, it depends on what kind of where you are in your life. Depends on what kind of shape you are in your life. That's yeah, it. Exactly. So anyway, there's that. I think you're doing great, babe. I think you, Except for my knee, you're no. making fun of all my ailments. Well, you got a bubble behind your kneecap. That's but okay. It's a little bit better but I think now. you're very beautiful. You're 50, you're going to be 57, and I I think you look as young as you ever have. You always oh, thank you. You always round up before your birthday. I've been saying I'm 57 for about two months now, even though it's not until I guess I'm just getting used to wearing it. You know, no, to answer your question, no kidding, I 
have gotten to the point where my birthdays and my, the number of my birthday is so insignificant to me. I have to stop and think. I can't remember how old I am. You have to stop and think sometimes. Like, I remember you threw a big party for me when I turned 50. Yeah. I, it was a surprise, and I pulled it, it off. It was a surprise. I definitely remember that. Since, like, 51 and 52? No idea. What did we do last year for my birthday? No idea. What did we do the year before that? No idea. I cannot remember. That means we probably did nothing. I'm sure we did. I'm sure you and I went out to eat. But I can look back at my phone and tell yeah, you what we did. Yeah. I don't remember right now. No, but I guess the point is... What did we do for my birthday last year? I know. Nothing. I didn't want to do anything. You didn't want to do anything. I just, my, but my friends get mad at me when I don't want to do anything for my birthday. So I have to do something. So I let one of them take me to lunch. I'm really, I'm going to look back at my photos. I had to send, Alan's like, what is that video on your um, phone? I had to send a picture of the shoes I want to wear tomorrow to my stylist. Are you seriously so. going to bring this up, like, on the podcast? Yeah, I want to see what we did for your birthday last year. What are you asking me I'm going to bring up? I'm going to look at what we did for your birthday. Well, apparently we went to... Um, we went to Papa, Papa Dose with my family. With your family. That's what we did. Well, that's good. I like that. That's what we did last that's year for great. your birthday. Okay, real quick, we're going to bring it home for Jerome. Uh, spring break, review. So, I guess last podcast, I talked about... I was we were on spring break. We were, we were on spring it. break, yeah. I was going to take the boys, uh, I was going to take Dylan fishing. We killed it. First time out, I think Dylan caught like seven, and I caught like one. What were y'all catching? Bass. We have a secret place we go. Can tell anybody where we go. It's in Frisco, and um, just throughout these little white grubs, Dylan, of course, with me, he, he, always, he always catches one. He's a good fisherman. And then we were going to go to the Mavericks game the next day. I think it was the next day. Well, they're playing Golden State. One of Dylan's favorite players plays for Golden State. His name is Steph Curry. That afternoon, I find out. We find out. I hear you say, oh, no. Yeah, that Steph Curry hurt his ankle, and he wasn't going to play. And the last time you took him to the very first Mavericks game, Luca wasn't. Luka playing. Doncic didn't play, and that's the only player. They and he was hurt play. the game before as well. So yeah, so he didn't play. But this time Luca did play. Yeah, it was Luka not did Steph play. Curry. No, it was a great game. It was I'm a lot sure, of fun. Yeah. We had a great time. It's just what what kind of luck is that? I know. know. But anyway. it's the Evans luck, as yeah, you I guess, said. I guess so. But it, it was fun. We it was really a chill spring break. The boys. I and I even asked Cole. I said, I said, you know, are you sad we like didn't go anywhere? He goes, no. I said, really? He goes, yeah, I just kind of wanted to stay home and do nothing. See, and Emma Kelly is the exact opposite. She doesn't feel like she had a vacation if we don't go somewhere. And it's just like, but where do you want to go, Emma Kelly? She doesn't even know. She's like, she sees her friends. They're all posting pictures from a cruise or from of a beach and their fresh sunburns. And she's like, oh, I'm not understanding her. I said, I promise I'll show you a good time. And I took her shopping and stuff like that. And now my 17-year-old daughter is obsessed with Lego. Yeah. And the plural of Lego, Lego, FYI, is Lego. Lego. It's not Legos. And people who love Lego will correct you if you say Legos. Don't be saying it's Legos. saying Legos. It's Lego. And she is obsessed with Lego. We were at some little store. I don't know where we were. Some store. And they were just, they had a little table of Lego. And there was a little heart thing, just like a wall hanging. She's like, can I get that just for something to do? I'm like, yeah. It was like 10 bucks or something, 12 bucks. I don't know, just a little project. And she loved it. And she's like, I want more. So we went to the Lego store, and now she is Lego obsessed. Wow, Legos. She has a Sorry, card Lego. table. Lego. She has a card table set up in her room, and she literally sits there for hours putting together Lego sets. Well, where was Emma Kelly? Like, we used to build Lego all she the time. She didn't care. Legos, Lego all the time. She didn't care until she actually did it, and she's just at a phase, a stage in her life, and now um, she's like, she doesn't want to just uh, take them apart and put them away. No. So now I've gotten to go find shelves to put, honey, I've got a project them? for you. Mm -hmm. We need to get floating shelves so she can display her Lego. Is there any more wall space in there? She's going to rearrange some things. Mm, okay. Would you do that for her, please? I can throw up a couple of shelves. Thank you, darling. But because like, she did the um. How many Lego sets are going to go up? Alan, it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, she did for you know for spring break since I didn't take her anyway. I said, okay, I'll buy you a nice Lego set. And so she wanted um, the train from Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Remember we wrote it at Universal? Yeah. 
And so it's kind of long, and I measured it. So we're going to need at least a 42-inch long shelf for oh, that. Oh, come on. It's long. The, the shelf of the train track and the depot. Good grief. Yeah, so I've got to have it. Oh, my knee's hurting again, honey. Bubbles. What's going on, y'all? My mm -hmm. knee. Mm -hmm. Might need to go to that joint place again. This isn't, isn't like that. It's not that kind of pain. It's like literally, it feels like water up underneath it. You can have water on your knee. I know that from the operation game. Bubbles. Operation. Remember, they had water yeah. on the knee. Yeah, yeah. I Maybe I do have a bubble, water bubble in my knee. One of the things was water under the knee. No. Water on the oh, knee. Come yes. On. No. Yes. It was a funny bone. It was water on the knee. A funny bone is in your elbow. And it was a little bucket because it was a bucket of water on your knee. Really? Yes. I don't remember that. I just remember that. <laughs> if you touch the side. I remember that. Well, there are kids from the 70s and 80s are so weird. Why? They're playing games like that. I don't think they're weird. Not weird. I think they're the most well-rounded. Tough. Yeah. Not weird. Tough. Yeah, most well rounded. Playing wheels that off perfect wheels off games like that. That perfect moment in time when M T V was created and before we had cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we don't need to go because I'm, you know, again, about to be fifty seven. I sound old if I start talk, talking about the good old start days. Start talking about the good old days? Yeah, no, we won't do that. All right, babe. Well, I do want to say before we leave that the the lovely young woman who has been putting together our posting our podcast for us I guess you said producing and editing it um, Michaela mm -hmm. this is her last time that she's going to be posting our podcast Alan she can't go anywhere where's Michaela she's going leaving. Oh, she is on. leaving yay networks to take a job with homeland security Michaela is leaving the nest she wasn't with us very long but it was very sweet. She's a wonderful young lady, and she's going to do a great job. She did a wonderful job, as far as I can tell. Smooth sailing. Oh, if we don't hear anything. That's all, that's, that's all we need to know. That's all we need to know. So anyway, we want to wish Michaela a bon voyage. Yes. And good luck with Homeland Security, whatever it is you're doing for them. It's probably top secret. I might get in trouble just for saying she's got a job with Homeland Security. I'm not sure. Do we know who Michaela's replacement is? I don't. Are you looking for some work? Anybody looking for some work? <laughs> no, I was just curious. I don't uh, know if anybody I does. don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm not privy to all the information that goes on in the Yay Network podcast family, but that's what I do know. So bye, Michaela. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. Think Boss Man and El Presidente are working on that? No. No? no. Why? I hope they are. They're not their problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right, babe. Well, I got to go take a shower and tan my legs. First podcast with the new setup. What do you think? I love it. I hope it turns out all right. I know we've had um, some people who are watching in the live audience, which you can watch us record the podcast live on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel at A Sandwich and Some Lovin'. They're saying maybe the audio might be a little different this time, but we'll see. We'll get it all the kinks worked out. Yeah, so go like this video and subscribe to Please do. At A Sandwich and Some Love. And we're going to start posting some. We've already started posting some uh, new videos there, and there'll be a lot more to come. So especially with this new setup in here. Yeah. Kelly and I are going to do a lot more stuff. Yeah, so we are. That'll be fun. And uh, follow us on the socials at the Alonzo 1971 on Instagram, at Kelly Raspberry on Instagram, Facebook. I'm um, at Kelly Raspberry Evans on Facebook. Though. Yeah, yeah. Showed some Facebook. respect to my husband there. I'm not on my Instagram. I don't have the TikTok. I had a lady today, a uh, a gal. She uh, DM'd me and said, "This guy is impersonating you." And I said, oh, "Where is that?" And she said, "On the TikTok." And I said, "I don't have the TikTok." Yeah, they get you on Instagram too, probably yeah. Facebook. I had a TikTok only because I don't. I didn't want somebody else to grab it with my name. That is so. I can't tell you how annoying. Not, not that people are trying to be helpful. That that part's not annoying. That part is very people helpful, stealing your and I appreciate pictures. that very much. The the stealing the pictures and I just don't get it, man. It's about money. Uh, you are ethnically ambiguous and whoa. handsome, and I think that's what helps with your. I mean, I'm not trying, but people don't know if you're Hispanic or Italian or you're kind of like ethnically ambiguous, even though you are Filipino and white. 
would you look at Alan and say, oh, he looks like a Filipino? But I think that that that, that works for the women they're trying to do. Because you appeal to a lot of people's tastes. A lot of European women. Yeah. I'll get I'll get these random messages from somebody in freaking Germany. Yeah. And and she speaks very little English and it's broken into German and English and trying to understand like, wait a minute, I thought I was talking to you. And I'm like, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, but I wonder how I, they find but I wonder how they find you. You know, if they if they're talking to somebody who they think his name is Raphael Smith. Raphael Smith. Whatever. I'm just coming up with a name, Alan. But if they think they're talking to somebody who has this like name. The Ninja Turtle? I was trying to pick an ethnically ambiguous name. Raphael Smith. Whatever. Anyway, you're 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 detracting from my point. How about Donatello Jones? Okay, Donatello Jones. If they think they're talking to this person, how do they deduce that it's actually Alan Evans in Plano, Texas? I think they, the ones I've talked to or chatted with, they, they get suspicious, and then they do a reverse search on the image. I would not know how to do that. You just go to the Google machine. Yeah, and unfortunately, some people have sent these scammers money, and that's what's so sad. And I hope people don't think it's really you that's pulling those stars. Does anybody ever accuse you of that? Or they no. always say... No, they always... They're, they're either... They're not sure, and they're texting me, like, or DMing me saying, hey, are, is this you? Because I thought I was talking to you. And I'm like, no, you were talking to me. Well, one time I Or did. they've already sent the money, and the guy's left. I know, I know. And they're, and they're, and they're upset. They're and that's like, why they Google searched you. Yeah. Like, one time, there was a... I don't remember, but the Instagram handle that they were using for you was like Michelangelo no, Smith? No, like Gus. I'll just say Gus. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And so I went to at Gus, one, two, three, and you know how it starts populating people that have, you know, they'll start populating Gus, one, two, threes. Well, what happened was Gus, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, yeah. six started popping up. Right. And it was a different man every time. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of men who are, their pictures get into this web, yeah. a dark web, I guess you'd call it. And they, I guess they use the most successful ones over and over and over again. You remember years and years ago, before, even before the social media, the Nigerian prince emails. Yeah, and you know, people are still falling for that to this You know day. why they kept sending those? Because they work. Because they work. They work. Yeah, so, I don't know. I guess you get to a certain age, you just feel like nobody would, nobody would be that cruel. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. But it's just a shame, and I'm sorry if anybody's been duped by Alan. It's not Alan. Well, it wasn't me. Sorry. But you should be kind of flattered that your picture is so popular. No, it's not at all. It's it's very annoying. I know. It's very very I know. annoying. And and, and upsetting. Well, nobody's using my name to hook the the young whippersnappers I'm winking at. Well, obviously that I'm not an effective uh, catfish. Well, people would recognize you. See, I'm I'm incognito enough to where, you know, they can use my picture. It's so funny because they use lots of pictures of you and the kids. I know. That's never one with me, the wife. Well yeah, that'd be a giveaway. And some of the people that, you know, have contacted me are like, Oh my gosh, hell yeah, I see you're yeah, married. And I'm like, Well, yeah. The scariest thing that ever happened to me was way back in the MySpace days, if you remember that. Emma Kelly was just a an infant. She was not even a year old, I think. And some some of my listeners um, recognized that this other woman was using pictures of Emma Kelly and she was coming up with this it was all Emma Kelly but she was coming up with the story how sick her baby was and how sick her baby was and that her baby eventually died and that freaked me out because I'm like if this woman knows who I am what and she's twisted like that would she do something you know that really freaked me out when she was using Emma Kelly's pictures but we recorded her and got her banned from MySpace at that point. But that was really twisted. Yeah, it's like, why? But I guess, you know, people are desperate for attention or, if not attention, money. Yeah. All right, babe. Well, on that note, it's not yeah. a real uplifting or a fuzz in my head, on my nose. I got it. There's a hair on the microphone. Yeah, it was a fuzz. It's okay. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. This was fun, babe. You got anything else? 
No, I really got to go get my stuff ready for tomorrow and point out the shoes you're supposed to wear. Yeah, I need to know what boot, chucka boot, chuka boots I'm supposed to wear. What's the name of it? Combat. It's Chelsea. It's a Chelsea boot. A Chelsea boot. I don't know if I have a Chelsea boot. You have some, I think so. That's like, I think a Chelsea boot's like a three-quarter slip-on. Isn't that what it is? Well, you have one that, I guess, I think, I don't know. Anyway, I'll just show you. I'll go point at it. Okay. Well, I love you desperately. I love you. I love our listeners desperately. I love y'all. I love our new setup, Desperate. I, I, I like this. This looks so good. proud. This is good. This looks good. I might just hang out in here for a while. Well, can I go show the shoes to you first and you can come back in here and hang out? I gotta get ready for bed. But I am sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good when you have a good sandwich. Got 21 text messages during the podcast. I don't know. Probably get two or three group messages. Thank you, Michael. What the hell is going on? Thank you, Michael. Guys, I'm sorry about the live sound. Um, You know, my phone sucks. It's old. It's an 11, if you can believe that. That could be part of the problem. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming we should keep doing the live. I know, you, you know, it's kind of fun and you get to chat amongst yourselves. And I, I like, when I have it on my laptop, I can see what y'all are saying, which actually, for me, it contributes to the conversation sometimes, which I like. So I don't know. I, I might do it on the laptop again, even though the quality... Thank you, Michael. Isn't um, isn't super great for YouTube, but we're capturing everything on the video now, so it might not even, it might not matter. So I, if I can't get the phone figured out, we'll probably just go back to the laptop. And if you want to watch, you know, clips or the entire podcast without the front end and all of this, then you can you can watch that on YouTube. So we'll see. Still trying to figure it out. Yeah, see, so usually I can see you guys chatting. I don't know where that is. I don't see a place. Where is that at? Chat viewing options. Oh, here we go. Live chat. Uh, Yeah, the, no, the sound on the podcast is going to be solid because that's that goes through the uh, that goes through the road um, recorder, and then the YouTube sound. I bought a new microphone for this camera I'm using. It's a road. It's like a boom mic, but it sits on top of the camera. So we'll see how that works. So the reason this audio on the live sucks is because it's my phone. And I think I had one of our very best customers just text me saying it could be some interference in the room, uh, like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And that's, that's very, very possible. Like my phone might be trying to hook up with my ear pods or my uh, AirPods or something like that. I don't know. That's probably what I should have done. I should have turned the Bluetooth off. I need the Wi-Fi, but the Bluetooth at the time. Anyway. All right, guys. I'm going to sign off of here. Hope you guys had fun. And um, subscribe to that YouTube. We're going to get that going. Yeah, interference. Thanks, Michael. We'll talk to you all soon. Come on, big finger. That looked weird. Let's go around this way. We're going to stop streaming.